travel by California here, ready to take in some roller coaster action in Santa Cruz. Now, normally on these coastal cities, you have the problem of it being very foggy and wondering when it's going to burn off. But today, it's perfect. And when there's dirt in them, our hills, I want to see it. So, let's roll. Santa Cruz sits on the north side of Monterey Bay with a bevy of redwoods looming just above. And if you're not into beaches, beach life, or more beaches, this is not the place for you. I've always had trouble grasping the layout of Santa Cruz because of all these tributaries that come down the coastline is kind of a little jagged. With 55,000 people living here, a major university, and great surf, I could use a Cartesian grid somewhere. We were here for a family vacation, and thankfully, it's a pretty bike-friendly area to explore for all ages, but Ciclo Valley Junior was clamoring to try out her new fat tires. My big adventure was coming on the second day, but I got a quick one in, going above the hills and getting a good lay of the land, rolling into SoCal and Capitola with the expected early morning fog, but I couldn't wait to get into some dirt. So the train ride we took above in Felton whetted my appetite, being immersed by this natural cathedral of redwoods. I was eager to get together with Larry, who's played a big part of our big Facebook group. Game day finally arrived meeting Larry in the flesh with some local knowledge to help navigate our way out of downtown. Our route was roughly 23 miles with 2,200 feet of climbing, going through Wilder Ranch State Park and UC Santa Cruz. And while this doesn't cover every trail, it does showcase what this area has to offer. We veered off our quick entry onto PCH, connecting with the parallel path, entering Wilder Ranch State Park with buildings that exist back from the 19th century. We hit a junction where we held off on taking in the bluff on the Ohlone Coastal Trail due to time but more on that later. Heading north took us onto some well curated dirt, passing the old rodeo arena before we saddled up for some climbing. It was a welcoming grade, keeping an excitable tempo. And it was a fun flow under the canopy of the oaks. The next chapter was equally welcoming, emerging into some prime open space you'll likely have to share with the current occupants. Whoever cut this trail in and out of the trees had some type of theater in mind, as the experience hits a high note at the top with so much natural beauty stacked into one view. We wiggled our way back into the woods, briefly turning onto the Long Woods Trail with a lot of options to process. This was a two mile climb with a tame overall grade but a majority of it 
feeling a bit more of a grind than before. As the trees closed in, it was clear forest action was coming up as we approached the woodcutter's trail. It was lovely to be placed deep in the neck of these redwoods, but pro tip, all these trees were so high that it created deep shadows not properly reflected on these GoPros. My sunglasses were heavily tinted, having me to rely on following Larry's line while listening for braking to give me clues what type of pace I needed. Halfway down, I was able to shed my sunglasses, which brought the whole experience of this forest into view, as well as the routes to avoid below. The trail emptied us out onto pavement, leaving us with a kilometer climb, lingering around double digits onto the quiet Smith grade where the CZU complex fire came right up against. Grade school continued, turning onto Empire grade, where we came in contact with a number of roadies as we spun our way towards more dirt. At the turn off, Larry helped piece everything together as we were near the woodcutter's start while talking shop about this locally built Coletti from the cyclists we passed earlier. Going through the gates placed us onto the campus of UC Santa Cruz, one of the prettiest universities you'll ever come across. You can feel the loose vibes coming across the painted drums, and no trip is complete without a gram. To show you shouldn't listen to anything I say, Larry led us down another sweet downhill, which taking off the sunglasses was a case of fool me twice on salvaging good optics. This was a favorite section for Larry, so I definitely wasn't opposed to circling back to make another run at it without feeling like bum 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 bum, like I'm in a Corey Hart song. After the second run, we looped back a little before turning south on just another gorgeous stretch of campus on the way out of this force. Go slugs! It was a quiet way to make our exit, but Larry still had some dirt saved up, which was much more fun than the class 4 bike lane off to the side. We wiggled our way out through the residential and I was fortunate to have Larry as a guide with even more trails we could have explored. But would this be the end of my gravel travels? Fortunately for this video's sake, I don't sleep well. And this flaw allowed me for an early jaunt on said missed coastline. Catching Wilder Ranch in the morning light was the right way to end this trip.
So much so that with the ease of these paths, I came back later with the family to properly punctuate a trip that we enjoyed on all levels. There's not much of a grade on this path and you're gonna wanna stop and explore to see what's below. So yeah, while this is a family trip, it checked a lot of boxes. I only got a slice of gravel in, but man, what an experience. Not just the quality, but redwoods. Anyways, please subscribe to my channel or check out our gravel map for other gravel rides and guides across the state. And please consider supporting on Patreon so we can give you more from the state of dirt.